Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So today I am standing along with the Duster in its natural habitat. The Duster is the only car you get in a four-wheel drive variant which is below 15 lakhs. The EcoSport does not come in a four-wheel drive and neither does the Creta. So let's get on with the review. I will show you the review of this vehicle along with its features. But before that, if you have not subscribed to my channel, then please do hit the like button and share the videos. The duster looks quite imposing when viewed from the front. It gets a double barrel halogen headlamp. Chrome is evidently used to differentiate the low and high beam reflectors. The chrome slat is now bigger and so is the Renault logo. I personally would have loved it if Renault used DRL to differentiate high and low beam instead of chrome. The fog lamp is housed as a separate unit and it is set rearward. with all the lights in action. Viewed from the sides, the duster looks quite contemporary and it gets an awkward carbon fiber embossed ORVM with turn indicators. Only the B pillar is blackened and not the A and C pillars. Also, the door handles could have been in chrome. Skid plates in silver are tastefully used throughout the body. Notice the alloy wheel, only the four wheel drive variant gets a red center. The wheel arches are very bulky which adds to the duster's appeal. Also there is sufficient space between the tire and the wheel arch. The tail lamp is a pure LED unit and looks quite good. The reverse camera is neatly hidden inside the big chrome slat. The rear parking sensors are integrated not so neatly. The center parking sensor looks awkwardly out of position. The duster gets a massive boot space of 410 liters. We need to pull this flap up to access the spare tire and no, it is not an alloy wheel. To the driver door pad, I was confused why Renault needed to give the door handle a glossy red finish. Also, the power window and mirror control switches are placed as a separate unit which also houses the speaker. The driver window gets an auto feature. The driver door pad also gets limited storage space as can be seen. The interiors look basic and contemporary when compared with the competition. The instrument cluster is shared with the petrol variant. Notice how the RPM meter is marked all the way up to 7000 RPM. Well, steering controls are inexistent as only cruise speed control switch is present in it. A big ergonomic failure, wiper control switch is placed on the right and headlamp control switch is placed on the left. Music system controls are placed below the steering wheel as a separate unit and are not so easy to operate. With all the lights in action, the digital display shows trip, average fuel economy, instantaneous fuel economy, distance to empty, average speed, outside temperature and total odometer reading. There is a small storage area in the center top of the dashboard. The center fascia gets a glossy black finish. The aircon vents can be completely shut and they also get a red bordering. As you can see, the quality is top-notch and no spots are formed even after pressing hard. This variant gets an integrated touchscreen and audio system with navigation as well as smartphone voice recognition with four speakers. Towards the right is the speed limiter switch and to the left is the cruise control switch. And you can set the cruising speed at the steering wheel which I found to be not at all ergonomic. It gets a single zone automatic climate control AC and the fan speed can be adjusted via the knob at the right. This is the mode selector button between two wheel drive and four wheel drive but you can lock it in four wheel drive mode only up to speeds of 40 km per hour after which the ECM itself changes to two wheel drive mode. That is the traction control switch and it also gets a eco button. It gets two cup holders and the gear knob gets a chrome treatment as well. And surprisingly, there is no storage area beside the gear knob and no armrest. Although you get one armrest, 
only for the driver which is integrated in the driver's seat. This top end model gets to SRP airbags which means you have to wear the seat belts for the airbags to get deployed in case of a collision. Also in case the co-passenger does not know the car in which they are sitting in, Renault has provided us a solution. There is a decent and welcoming area of storage right above the glove box and the reason why I said welcoming is because the glove box itself is way too small. The driver's seat gets height adjustment but it is an angular adjustment rather than a vertical adjustment and it also gets lumbar support adjustment. But both height and lumbar adjustment is spring type that is there are only two levels of adjustments. To get an armrest and with two cup holders but this is position a little low to my liking but still it's good that you get one now coming to legroom this is the maximum legroom available with the front seats pushed all the way forward and now this is the minimum legroom which is available the duster all-wheel drive shares its 1.5 liter diesel engine with the 110 ps duster two-wheel drive Yet there are 4 changes in the all-wheel drive setup that will make it a significantly different experience to drive. First the engine is in a different state of tune. Second difference is that the all-wheel drive 6-speed gearbox has shorter gear ratios. Third is the independent rear suspension and fourth is the all-wheel drive drivetrain. The engine and gearbox differences transform the driving personality of the duster all-wheel drive. The infamous turbo lag is virtually gone. The duster all-wheel drive is incredibly drivable. Even on the highway, just put your foot down and the power comes in smooth and early. The engine feels extremely usable. Thanks to the short gearing, you don't need to move the hand to the gear lever for a downshift. Acceleration is superb. The pull is strong and it reaches triple digit speeds in no time. The engine red lights have 5000 rpm which is pretty impressive and you feel the torque up to 4800 rpm. Brakes offer a good bite and you get ABS EBD with brake assist along with traction control. The all-wheel drive's ride quality is better than the two-wheel drives. Due to the all-wheel drive's need for drive shafts to the rear wheels, the rear suspension has been changed from a cost-effective torsion beam to a better performing independent multi-link setup. In certain situations, this setup has a critical advantage. For example, when the rear wheels hit bumps at different times, the two-wheel drive's torsion beam will have a tendency to create a slightly more side-to-side -side rolling motion at the rear of the car. The independent rear suspension tackles these typical pothole situations with less wind-up and therefore less body movement. Overall the Duster's ride quality package is fabulous and the all-wheel drive's rear suspension lends itself to further improving it. So let's get on with the conclusion. Should you buy the Renault Duster all-wheel drive variant? Well, if I had 15 lakhs and if I wanted a all-wheel drive car, I wouldn't think twice. I would literally go to Renault and I would buy this vehicle simply because you don't get any other options at this price. You cannot buy any other car with a four-wheel drive capability, something which the Duster excels. And the engine, it's so good. It's very refined. It's, it pulls you all the way up, it feels like a petrol and the steering it's well weighted. Well, it's not the best to drive in traffic but it's the best to drive in the highway. So overall, I like this car. So if you are in the lookout for a four wheel drive car and that too for a compact SUV, then the Renault Duster should be in your to buy list. So until then.